Amen. Amen. Love him with your life, 11. Let's get into this. Amen. In order to truly love the Lord with your life, you must be willing to trust him with your whole heart. You know, that sounds like a cliche because you've heard it said so much in church. But do you really know what it means to trust him with your whole heart? Do you know? When they mandate it on your job and you have to say no and have to wonder how you going to, where are you going, what your life's going to be like after that, that's trusting them with your whole heart. Yeah, people ask me. I get emailed 20, 30, 40, 50 times a day, inbox, 100 times a day sometimes. They're mandating on my job, and we got a mortgage, and we have bills, and what are we supposed to do? Trust him with your whole heart. And then lean not to what? (laughs) Your own understanding. But you got to trust him. Nahum 1 and 7, the Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that what? He knoweth them that trust in him. In other words, he knows what you're going to do. Because he knows whether or not you trust him. He knows whether or not it's just talk. He knows whether or not you just come into church because grandma used to come. And told you you better come. He knows. So he's a stronghold in the day of trouble so you need to trust them with your whole heart amen? amen the enemy seeks to hurt people so they will distrust those that are elected to guide them this is what our world is made up of this is what's happening the enemy wants people hurt so they'll distrust their guides the people that are supposed to guide them you know i woke up the other day and i was just thinking Churches are really closed. Ninety thousand people at the Cowboys game. No mask. The enemy seeks to hurt people, so they will distrust those that are elected to guide them. John ten and ten. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life, that they might have a what? So at, in a young age, the enemy came to you to kill, steal, and destroy, do something to you that would bother you for the rest of your life. There's something in your life that has bothered you all your life. And the devil keeps coming after that and trying to manipulate you with that, tempt you with that. Am I telling the truth? Yeah, everybody in here. That was some, something he did. And a lot of times, you didn't even know he did it. Witches and warlocks work for the hospital. Some of them got your blood, did a spell with your blood. Some of them did something. Yeah. Did a seance. Santeria. Drew a line around you. Dropped your blood in the middle. Drew a line. That line will keep you from getting married for the rest of your life. You can't get out of that circle. Single circle. Single drop circle. That's, that's the spell. With your blood. You a baby. Yeah. Thief cometh to steal, to kill. And to destroy. But God said, I come that you might have life. So if you come to him, man, he going to break spells. Spells ain't nothing but mind control anyway. Devil gets you to say it. Repeat what was done to you. Once you say it, man, you ain't ever going to get married. Ah! You just activated the spell. Man, I'm all into this entropy. I need to stop. But my mind, I can't hear that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah just like that yeah so every relationship you sabotage it because there's a spell on it. 
Yeah. Why did everybody get married? There's a spell on you. Yeah. Can I keep going? Because so many were hurt by daddy issues, mommy issues, and other developmental issues, it's hard for people to trust any kind of leadership in this hour. I have older pastors telling me, bruh, my church is closed. You're not going to open it up yet? Bruh, it's closed. We ain't going back in there. Why you not going back in there? Bruh, have you seen this generation? They don't listen to nobody anyway. I'm tired of fact checking every sermon. While I'm preaching, they googling. See, the old, older cats, not my age, well, yes, yeah, some of them, but the older ones, they, they, I don't know, they ain't doing it. No, I'm not dealing with these insubordinates. Walk up to me, call me by my first name. Disrespectful. Treat me like a chump after all the years I have prayed for them. All the I've invested all this spiritual energy to help them, counsel them, married some of them. You gonna walk up to me and just call me just anything? Treat me like that? Nah, bro, stay at home. Yeah, they, you know. I was like, well, man, I, God won't let me quit. Amen. Amen. Y'all heard me say God. He won't let me quit. They do that to me, treat me like I'm trash. After I have, I mean, done the world for them. Treat, I mean, just talk about you like a dog. Yeah. Yeah. Like your life don't matter. Even wish you did. Dream that you're going to die and tell you. That kind of evil, just evil. Yeah, that's what they do. That's this generation. So these pastors, are, man, they taking the COVID, the COVID pass. Oh, the government then gave us a pass, and it's called COVID. I'm keeping this church closed. Now, some of them wasn't doing much anyway, so I mean, don't you try to blame that on COVID. You was failing already, bro. Ain't got nothing to do with corona. <laughs> but a lot of them, they don't want no parts of it because these folks' issues are too great. They can't handle that level of disrespect. Men that have prayed hours and hours on their knees, crying out to God, you going to walk up to them like none of that matters? You can say what you want about me. I'm young. I don't, you know... But man, you're going to disrespect these elders in the faith? Hebrews 13 and 7. Remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. Whose faith follow, considering the end of their uh, conversation. Remember them. Yeah, it's a tough generation to pastor, Jack. Is there something going on? Well, we rebuke the devil. Amen. Amen. He whack anyway, because I mean, we can't read our phones. I mean, the screens is just a luxury. Somebody give me an iPad or something. Who got it? Is this a Google? What is it? <laughs> I got to mess with D. People today are encouraged to find their own answers online and go against anyone that disagrees with their findings. That's this generation. Going to go online, going to let Google pastor them so they don't have to have an authority over them. 
They're going to just Google answers. Then they come to you with stuff. And I tell them, just as rude. Hi, brother, what, what, what about this video right here? I'm not watching that. I mean, but he said some good stuff. I'll never know. <laughs> Amen. Oh, some folk can't handle that, see. They call that, oh, he think he's something. He think, well, I think I'm a pastor. That's what I think. I think I've been doing this for 30 years. I think I know a little something about the word. I do. So I don't need no random video where folks are trying to get hits. Strike all. They trying to strike all is what it is. That's all it is. They see something happening. Now, now they're sending out the martial law email and text and inbox. Here comes martial law. Don't they do that every time? We good? Because that was getting heavy. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon. All right. I got a new computer, so we're trying to get it where it needs to be. Amen. Amen. But I believe the devil, the devil was doing this during prayer. He just. And we're going to keep going. Amen. Amen. Well, hit that space bar. <laughs> yeah, you just stand over there and hit that space bar for me. <laughs> Thank you, Deacon. Uh, look at how God go use you with the servant. <laughs> but people today are encouraged to find their own answers online and go against anyone that disagrees with their findings. Daniel 12 and 4. Very interesting passage. But thou, old Daniel, after God has shown Daniel all of this stuff, prophecy, prophetic stuff that's going to happen in the future, y'all know only the Bible can do that. Amen. Like, you ought to be saved just because the Bible has predicted everything that's happening right now. Amen. Like, that's a reason right there. That's a reason right there. I, you know what? I'm going with the Lord because he has predicted everything that is happening right now. From a kid, you were told you wouldn't be able to buy and sell unless you took something. From a kid. Why didn't Buddha know that? What about Confucius? Why didn't he know that was racist? Was that racist? That was racist. Okay. Let me do one for the Negroes. Balance it out. Yeah, why didn't Confucius know? Why don't these guys know? Nostradamus. None of them know. But the Bible knew. The Bible knew. One world government. Uh, one world religion. Oh, the Bible just nailing it all. Man, I'm going to serve God. Amen. But he told Daniel 12 and 4. He said, but thou, old Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, keep it sealed. Even during the end time, keep it sealed. Just seal it. Because nobody's going to understand it. Then the Bible says, many shall do what? What are they doing now? On the internet, running to, and, I mean, every video pop up. Ooh, we better go store up some water. Oh, we better go buy some tuna. Ooh, we better go build a bunker. Oh, I better go plant a garden. Ooh, they better get rid of all the meat. Oh, now they're going to get rid of all the vegetables. Ooh. Every, just every message you get, bing, 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 bing. You running to and fro. Bible said you would. I'm not living my life like that. I promise you. I promise you. No, I, I, I'm not being moved by everything to come over the internet because I believe the internet is the devil's veins. I believe Satan created that thing. Yeah, to make you schizophrenic and run to and fro and not listen to the voice that he's already placed over you that could lead you. Listen to the hand claps. That means we got too many people. Yeah. Why would you come in here and then have to go fact check everything and reading everything and watching everything and then come in here with all the doubts? Yeah, well, I go to that church, but you know, I don't agree with everything, you know. 
Just stay on Google, man. You will find somebody to agree with you on Google. Google will make sure you do. But he said, even to the time of the end, many shall do what? They're going to run to and fro, and knowledge shall be what? Increased. Seal up the book because knowledge is increased. The generation, this generation seeks, oh, there we go. Okay. It vibrated. Look at God. Oh. <laughs> this generation seeks guidance through their own peer group and those that society deems as influencers. Gone are the days when they trusted their parents or their God-chosen leaders. It's all about the influencers now. This is the influencer generation. How do you become an influencer? Look cute. Rock the latest gear. And then you're an influencer. Ain't no influencers raggedy and busted. John the Baptist would not qualify as an influencer. Even though he took 500,000 folks out to the wilderness, baptized them, and changed their lives and saved their souls. That's what John the Baptist did, eating locusts and wild honey. But he wouldn't qualify to be an influencer. Jesus, rocking them sandals, can't qualify. He know how the J's on. You got to have the latest J's. And then they have to be designer ones. Yeah. To qualify to influence this generation. You have to have a certain look. Then you're qualified. Qualified to what? Give me information. I'm going to follow you. Going to follow me? Yeah. Follow you where? Wherever. So now you want to know what's going on in the news. You're going to watch your influencer so they can break it down for you while they're styling and profiling. I'm preaching in here. Yeah. Society deems them. How do you know they're influencer? Look at all the views and the, the, the followers. You have to have a certain amount of followers to be an influencer. Well, how do they get all those followers? I don't know. Because whenever I upload a video that goes against the narrative, they shadow ban me. They take my video, they took, they did something dirty to this last one. So they took the video off my timeline and left it on IGTV so the people can't, you can't find it if you go to my page. They, they just raggedy. And it was just talking about health. Being healthy. They don't care. So you got to live up to some of their standards to even have the big following. Gone are the days when they trusted their parents. Yeah, that teenager. You go in there and tell them what to do. They go in their room, get on the phone, and see what the influencer has to say. Then they judge you by that. You too hardcore. You don't understand. You dated and outdated. Now, we thought that about our parents when we was young. But we didn't have no backup. We were just <laughs> going to get a whooping and stupid by ourselves. Our friends wouldn't even come around and try to get with us. No, because I know your daddy. Like, I don't want none of that. But now the kid can go in their room and be a part of a whole other realm of influence. And question everything you're teaching them. Question it. Luke 6 and 39. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall not they both do what? Fall in a... You gonna listen to an influencer that ain't been through nothing? Yeah. I know folks taking marital advice from folk been married 10 minutes. You've been married 15 years and you listen to somebody 15 minutes of marriage? You need to be telling them something. I mean, but we about to break up. Well, you made it 15 years. There's still some nuggets in there. That's a long time. 
And after 15 years, you might as well. Man, that's a big investment. But they both going to fall in a ditch. The blind can't lead the blind. Leaders that promote biblical principles are considered closed-minded or judgmental. That's, that's my nickname. Closed-minded and judgmental. My brother, I can't receive anything for you because see, you and the, you have a problem with women and leading, you know, you, you just don't want no women leaders. And it's just, you know, things have changed. That mindset is, well, I, first of all, I ain't said nothing about no women leading. She just ain't supposed to be leading a man. Now, if that's what you're talking about, bingo. You got me. Because the Bible says that the man is the head of the woman as Christ is the head of the church. So in order to change the man's role, you got to change Christ's role. And that's why your church is closed. Christ ain't the head of the church. Because the man ain't the head of the woman. I will preach this. I don't care how you looking at me. You shouldn't be in here no way. It's been this way since day one. And real women don't have a problem with any of it. They're like, please, please, will you please take care of me? Woman in her right mind. Oh, but that's judgmental. Close-minded. But if you are a wizard or a witch, somebody emailed me and told me, said, brother, can't nobody say witch like you. I said, brother, ain't nobody been through stuff with witches like me. There's a reason why I put that extra emphasis on it, bro. I'm going to say it again. But if you are a wizard or a witch, I have to gather it up. Witch! But if you're a wizard or a witch, a promiscuous influencer, a compromising actor, oh, sellout, or an explicit performer, you are okay to listen to and qualified to give advice. Matthew 20 and 16. So the last shall be first, the first shall be last. For many be called, but what? <laughs> Few are chosen. The reason people are distrustful of leadership is because they have been hurt or let down by someone in their development. Yeah. Somebody let you down. And it made you. Not trust. Or distrustful. Of leadership. And distrust isn't just happening in your body. Distrust is being spoken to you by the devil. Yeah. Like you'd be sitting in here and talking to me. And the devil is speaking to you. Telling you you can't trust me. That's the devil. But he has free reign to do that because you haven't dealt with your trust issues from past trauma. He has an open lane so he can always get you there. You had all them boyfriends and girlfriends. You did that. So you opened all of that up. That's why I preach. Oh, Rushu Tutu. That's why I preach against these teenage relationships. Man, you just opened up highways and byways. Every time you get hurt, you're going to distrust. And you'll find yourself struggling to trust any man. You don't play with that. In the Bible days, older days, they didn't play with that. Matter of fact, the father would just leave for a little while, come back with a girl. His son would say, who is that? Oh, this is your wife, bro. I found her by a babbling brook. Talked to her daddy. I already cleared it. She good to go. Oh, well then come on in. It's done.
Yeah. He get the father-in-law, tell the father-in-law, okay, come. It's the father-in-law, because the father-in-law was the important one. He was putting the wedding together. Right? And, but they wouldn't tell anybody when the wedding was. You just had to be ready. That's another sermon for another day. Yeah, the, the five, the, 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 the foolish versions. Yeah, it's a whole lot to that. Yeah, but you playing with it. Here's my boyfriend, he cute. I like him. I like her. And then the parents are like, well, they can just play together. They can just, okay, play. Okay, play. They don't have the same equipment. So they both playing a different game. Okay, play. Play date, play. They don't listen to me. They ain't going to listen. They ain't, ain't going to listen. They, they, they ain't going to listen. But you don't play with that. Do you know what you're doing to their future? Oh, I know Jay Bryan clapping with me. Hallelujah. Yes. He the youth pal. He got to deal with all this. Yeah, but you got distrustful because somebody let the gate, left the gate open. <laughs> let me let me stop. Okay, let me. Let me. <laughs> Young folks laughing like what? What? They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. That's the license to cut sermon right there. <laughs> But yeah, you've been hurt. You were hurt in your development. So hurt developed with you. So hurt is actually a characteristic of your personality. It's baked in there. Because while you were developing, you had boyfriends and girlfriends and little relationships. Puppy love. Breaking up. And your mama coming in there. Ah, oh, it'll be all right. He, it's, there's plenty of fish in the sea. And your heart is just tore up. Because it meant something to you. Yeah. That's your development. You're developing. So that feeling develops in you. Subconsciously, you're trying to avoid that feeling. So you mess up relationships with dudes that could have been a great relationship. But because the wrong thing got baked in you, you don't want to have nothing to do with it. I don't look at him. He don't look good. I, I don't know, you know. I mean, his hair and oh, his, his shoes and oh, that car. He don't, he, I would. Okay. I mean, stuff that don't mean he's whack because he don't have no woman. I mean, don't you understand that? God looked at man and said, I made a good man, but you're whack. You need to help me. You need some help, bruh. Look at your shoes, Adam. Need some help. I know I'm preaching. Yeah. Yeah, you're picking them apart. Now you're 40. Still picking them apart. You ain't picking him apart because of how he physically appears. You gave your heart to somebody and they ripped it out. And you need to be repaired. Or you're going to sabotage every relationship. Every good dude. No, you're not okay. Get mad at me, baby. They mad at me. Mad at me. You hooked so-and-so up and you hooked so-and-so up and you didn't have no man for me. Mad at me. But you've been walking around for a couple of years now since you left. By yourself. So you need to get mad at every place you go. The gas station. Go talk to the gas, the, the, the manager and tell him I'm mad at you. Because all these dudes out here getting gas and ain't none of them hollered at me. The supervisor at Six Flags. Brother, I've been coming. I got a season pass. I've been coming week after week. I 
think you need to go back and apologize to that pastor. That's what he going to tell you. You mad at me? Matthew 5 and 28, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. So there's some, look y'all, there's some places you're not even able to go spiritually. Because you need to be reconciled with someone. Distrust. Because somebody else hurt you. You did somebody else wrong. Ain't had nothing to do with it. Only God can heal this and cause people to trust and love the way God wants us to. He wants us to be loving, forgiving, and understanding so that we can experience the same from others. How are you going to experience love and forgiveness and understanding if you're not giving it? Why don't nobody want me? Because you don't know how to love. You don't even let love happen. I tell couples all the time, man, won't y'all fall in love? Well, I need to see what he about. I need to see what she about. See, I told y'all the internet was the devil's veins. You done went on Instagram and found out too much. Some of that stuff you weren't supposed to know until year five. They got all the information on there. Every shot of they behind on that. I mean, you know what they look like. You know what they smell like from the, from the uh, uh, IG. That's too much information. This is my dear diary. Dear diary on the World Wide Web. I mean, he, he, he was going to like you. He was about to till he went to your page. It's my favorite song. It's my favorite. Ooh, I love to twerk. You're like, oh, she stink. You a twerk on the World Wide Web? You know how stink you got to be? I don't want her. Yeah. But you're not loving, understanding, man. You're not forgiving. Relationships can't go nowhere because you don't know how to love nobody. Man, you fall in love, boy, faults start not mattering. Because the Bible said, love covers a what? A multitude of yeah, yeah. I don't see how you can forgive her after what she did. I don't see how you got, you ain't in love. You don't understand how love works. Love works the same as Jesus' love. Jesus died for all of my sins. That's how love works. Real love. You don't know because you ain't never had it. Can I preach in this place? Psalms 28 and 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him. And, I, and I'm what? You're supposed to come to church. Trust God with your heart so you can get help. So you won't be walking around a raving lunatic. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, will I what? Praise him. When we learn to truly trust God, our trust in our parents, leaders, and guardians will always exist through the love and forgiveness that God gives us by his spirit. He ain't going to love nobody online like you love real people if the love of God truly exists. Real people going to matter more because they right there. You're going to be reading what strangers say and that takes importance out in your life over your mother the one that fed you, the one that cloaked, the one that was there when you were sick. She might have missed work, whatever, to be there. Her whole day, walking you around, holding you till you felt better. You're going to read something online and choose that over your mother? Over your father? Over the preacher? Fighting demons so they don't get you. And you're going to take the word of a demon? First Corinthians 13 and 8. 
Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will what? Cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. Love's the only thing that's going to stand. You better learn how to love. Amen. Children, learn how to love your parents. Tell them every day. Hug them. Love them. They're taking good care of you. Bringing you to a place so you can hear the word and be better. Love your parents. You know if you don't, you're going to cut your life short. And you're going to jack your life up. Summary. <laughs> Sinful lifestyles are born in people when they harbor distrust of those that they view should be better than they are. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. Should be better. Even though they doing the fool, they're going to judge somebody because of their mistakes. Even though they're doing the fool. The Bible tells us to judge not in that scenario because we all do stuff. So we're not going to harbor distrust because somebody that we love messed up. Amen. That's going to matter to you one day. Fool's heel. Phone ring. Who is this? I didn't call you. Yes, you did. For example, a parent that should be doing things the right way can error or and hurt their children. Right? Right, parents? Some of y'all done whooped the wrong kid. We just have so many. There's so many of y'all. I thought I got the right one. I'll get the right one next time. But I'm beat. But yeah. Everybody hurt you. If the child does, uh, a parent that should be doing things the right way can err and hurt their children. If the child doesn't forgive and understand, they can grab hold to the wrong friend. That's all it takes. The wrong, big mouth, dumb friend. Or the wrong music. Old stank music. Or the wrong author. Yeah. Books. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could tell you the girl that brought me the trash bag full of novels, love novels, and the demon that manifested in her. Yeah. Books and novels, authors, websites, pages, influencers. Just the wrong one. And they can be taken down a path of rejection which leads to rebellion. Because the person that's leading them was rejected. So they connect with the rejection part and then it leads to rebellion now they want to hear what sound advice could come from their mother their father or their spiritual leader or the youth pastor or the pastor whatever they don't want to hear that because they grabbed hold to the wrong friend wrong music wrong author something wrong instead of giving understanding to the parent they allow the pain that their influences carry to cultivate their own resentment this causes them to adopt a what-does-it-matter approach to life because the people in their life that were supposed to treat them right failed. You know, when you don't give somebody a pass, you don't get one. When you don't give somebody a pass, you took yours away. That's how life works. This is a major trap in our world and it is causing people to live their own or live their lives with resentment for others which produces mistrust in God. They feel, how can you trust God when the parent he gave you abuses you or neglects you? How can you trust God when someone that called themselves a Christian hurts you or lets you down? How can you trust in God when he didn't answer your prayer to stop violations or abuse? This is a major problem in our world today. If you feel this way about anyone, you must first forgive. Amen. 
Praying to God for the power of his love to assist you in forgiving is a must. So I'm not asking you to do it yourself. God has to help you with this, especially depending on the level that you were hurt or betrayed. It takes God to fix this. Just like Stephen did when he was being stoned, we must forgive. You know, they were picking up rocks, stoning Stephen, and he said, God, don't charge this to them. And Stephen was still concerned about their souls, even as he is left and departed. Just like Jesus did when he was being murdered. We have to forgive. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And most of the folks that did something to you didn't know what they were doing either. Just like you didn't know how bad it was when you were doing it. Or when you did it to someone. Can I keep preaching? We must forgive in order to trust God. And we must trust God in order to love him with our lives. We do not trust him. We will not give him all of us. And he requires our entire being to be sanctified by him. Forgive and let go today, people of God. No matter what was done to you, if you can let it go and trust God today, your life will change for the better. Amen. Amen. Jude 20. Y'all ought to just at least once a month read the entirety of Jude. I love the book of Jude. And it's short. It's only one chapter. Jude 20. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your what? Not just your regular faith. Most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto what? Eternal life. And of some have compassion. You got to have compassion. Making a difference. Can't throw folks away. Can't write folks, that's it. That's it. They going to hell when they die. You can't do that. And others save with fear. Some folks you got to just be straight blunt with. Brother, you keep doing this, you're going to hell. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him. Now unto who? You can't do this. Look at somebody and say, you can't do this. You can't stop falling. Are y'all listening to me? You can't stop falling. That's why you can't, you, you can't be judgmental when it comes to this because you can't stop falling. Man, you're not good enough. Do you know you delete the whole crucifixion if you're good enough to do that? No. Now unto him that is able to what? The whole folks used to say he's a keeper. He will keep you from falling if you stay with him. Problem is when folks are ready to fall, they don't want to hear from the keeper. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. But now unto him. That is able to keep you from falling. And to present you what? So this means even all of the times you fell before. He can present you like you never ever failed. (laughs) Present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Everyone stand to your feet. It's a good word here. This is the, le- we did this last week. We got to do it again. You got to let this, look y'all, you got to let it go. I'm not going to call you up for that. I'm calling up folks. 
You may feel like the devil put a spell on you when you were young. You don't know. Could be to block your marriage, finances, just met, just you feel like somebody did something. And I'm going to break it by the power of God. So come on up. Come on up. Somebody did something. Because there's something in my life that needs to change. And I'm having trouble changing it. So I'm going to believe that the power of God that has visited me this week, I'm going to believe that he's going to visit you. And whatever it is, whatever pot he keeps stirring, whatever phone number he keeps calling, whatever it is, God's power supersedes him so much. Oh, we're going to talk about this October 31st. God's power, oh my goodness. He smashes the devil in every category. It's not even close. Not even close. And he's going to use that power to fix your situation. I promise you, if you give your heart to him and truly trust him, trust him, trust him, trust him. And I mean, with this that you came up here for, trust him. Everyone bow your heads. Trust him. Trust him. Just picture in your mind that you're just entering into the courts and you see him. Just an image of him or a likeness of him, but you're walking in just before him. In his presence, you bring in your problems and issues and just your raggedy self, just bringing it. This is all I got, Lord. This is me. This is what the world did to me. This is what life did to me. This is what trauma did to me. This is what dysfunction did to me. This is what my own mistakes and my own error and foolishness and just whatever. It did all of these things to me. So I'm coming before you. Because you're the only one that can help me. Somebody did something, violated me, and I didn't even know it. Took something, took my blood, took, made a deal with a parent or a grandparent. Somebody pledged into something and offered me up as the sacrifice. Whatever the case, be bringing that before the God of all gods who knows all. And all God's going to do is stretch out his hand and say, give it to me you got to trust him. Are you ready to trust him? And I mean trust him. Like never before. Trust him. Give it to him right now. Give it to him right now. Right now. Right now.
trust you with everything can't handle it on my own I trust in you Lord oh God my helper and my hope I trust in you oh Lord I trust in you Father God right now we trust you with everything everything so I pray right now that your power, the power of your Holy Ghost, Father God, will saturate this place, answer every need, break every curse, undo every spell in the name of Jesus. Every charm, every hex, every vex, everything that was spoken, every word curse, every negative image, we speak against it right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. That image, that self-image that is negative, that negative voice, that voice of suicide, that voice that comes to torment, we come against it right now in the name of Jesus. We break every spell in this place by the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't leave here with that spell on you. You will not leave here with that curse. You will not leave here with that generational curse. You won't leave here. It is broken right now in the name that is above every name. By the power of God, we speak it right now over every marriage. That marriage will not end. In the name of Jesus. Lifestyle practices, lesbianism, homosexuality. We break the curse of it right now. In the name of Jesus. Promiscuity, adultery, fornication. All of these curses that have come through a bloodline we cancel them right now lustful thoughts and desires we cancel them right now in the name of Jesus pornography we cancel it right now all of these things that crept in unaware that came through someone else's sin someone else's defiance we break the curse of it right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus that couple that is trying to conceive we bless the womb and break the curse that has come on that womb the curse whether it was Santeria Yoruba whoever laid the curse we break it right now in the name of Jesus that single man we break the curse of gamma phobia fear of marriage sabotage that young lady we break sabotage right now in the name of Jesus we break it every relationship in the past we cancel all of them every tie to them in the name of Jesus and we will walk freely under the power of God as new creations if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away so we call these things old every curse we call it old all of it everything that we were under that's not like God we call it old old things are passed away and behold all things become new new creations right now new marriages new way of thinking right now new love Love, 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 new love for that single man, that single woman. Love, love for that marriage that was about to end. Love, we speak it right now. For that person with low self-esteem, love, love of who God made, love of God's image that you have. Love, we speak it right now in the name of Jesus and we'll live for you God we'll love you with our life in Jesus name we pray amen amen come on hug somebody and say I'm a new creation come on you gotta speak it say old things have passed away 
all things become new. All things. Come on, tell somebody. Testify of it. All things become new. Speak it. All things become new. Become new. I'm not leaving this place the same. I'm not leaving this place vulnerable, allowing the enemy room in my life. I'm not leaving this place like that. All things, all things become new. All things become new. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some more praise in here. Even knowledge of present happenings that we are all headed to a real destination after this life. There is a real heaven and a real hell. There are other dimensions of space and time that we must account for in this life. So we must join with the power of God to decipher the good spaces and bad spaces, the dangerous realm and the profitable one. Most importantly, we must not allow sin to hinder our application of God's instructions. Get ready to go on a journey with me to better understand the supernatural dimension that God created and how mankind is striving to get there without going there. This is Era of Man, Destination Entropy.